Hey guys, welcome to the 25th lecture of the DIP series. This is Anushri Kariski and today we're going to study about thresholding. Now whenever we do thresholding, it is carried out with the assumption that the range of intensity levels covered by objects of interest is different from the background. What does this mean? Suppose if we have an image, then you can see here the object is of very high intensity and the background is of low intensity right so this is what it means that whenever we do thresholding either the object should be very light and the background should be dark or the object should be dark and the background should be light okay so that is the prerequisite then the steps for thresholding are the first one a threshold t is selected Okay, and then any point x comma y in the image at which f of x comma y is greater than t is called an object point. Then the segmented image denoted by g of x comma y is given by g of x comma y is equal to 1 if f of x comma y is greater than t. And it is equal to 0 if f of x comma y is less than or equal to t. Okay, so any given image which you have okay you select a t value and then based on that you divide it into two parts okay so if that given f of x comma y value is greater than the threshold then the value would be one okay you would just write one at that pixel value and otherwise you would write zero okay now if we have to draw a histogram for this it would look something like this right so here you can see it has two dominant modes okay either this is the background and this is the object or this is the object and this is the background okay and you can see here we have dark intensity okay this is the dark region and this is the light region and therefore we have a single threshold value t okay which is over here which divides the two regions okay so this is what the histogram looks like and uh, since uh, there are only two major dominant modes that's why we have a single histo uh, sorry a single threshold value here okay now let's look at the different types of thresholding the first one is global thresholding now if the t value is constant throughout the image then it is known as global thresholding and if the t value changes over an image okay that, that is if we have more than one t value more than one threshold value then that is uh, called variable thresholding okay and under variable thresholding if the value of t at any point x comma y in an image depends on the properties of a neighborhood of x comma y okay so if we are checking the t value and the t value is changing at any point x comma y based on the neighborhood of that point then it is known as local or regional thresholding next we have dynamic or adaptive thresholding so under variable thresholding again if the value of t depends on the spatial coordinates x comma y then it is known as dynamic or adaptive thresholding. Next you can see we have an example here of thresholding of two types of light objects on a dark background. Right? So you can see the histogram here. It has three dominant modes and it has two different threshold values. Right? So the g of x comma y function here it is equal to a if f of x comma y is greater than t2 which means this region okay is equal to b if f of x comma y is greater than t1 and less than or equal to t2 which means this region and then it is equal to c if f of x comma y is less than or equal to t1 so which is this region so here you can see based on the threshold values we are able to divide the entire region into three components into three major dominant modes 
okay and that is how we are getting the threshold values so whenever you are given a histogram okay and you have to find the threshold values so you can see the deep part of the histograms and based on that you can find out the threshold value okay and based on that you can then segment the image right now let's look at the procedure for global thresholding to obtain the value of t so the first step is select an initial estimate for t okay this value should be greater than the minimum and less than the maximum intensity level in the image and it is better to choose the average intensity in an image so if you have any image okay first you need to select the threshold value t okay you can select any value which is greater than the minimum and less than the maximum or you can choose the average intensity of an image okay once that is done then segment the image using t what does segmenting mean you will just divide it into two groups of pixels g1 and g2 now g1 will have all the pixels with gray level values greater than t and g2 will consist of pixels with values less than or equal to t once this is done then compute the average gray level values mu1 and mu2 for the pixels in regions g1 and g2 so mu1 will be the average of the region g1 and mu2 will be the average of the region g2 after that you need to compute the new threshold value which is equal to t is equal to half into mu1 plus mu2 okay and then we need to repeat steps 2 through 4 until the difference in t in successive iterations is smaller than a predefined parameter t0 now to explain this whole procedure i have taken an example here yeah. so here you can see this is the image and we have taken the initial t value as the average of all the pixels so we have just taken the average of these pixels which comes out to be 4.55 we have rounded it off to 5 okay after that the next step was segmenting the image so we have segmented the image using t so we have got two groups g1 and g2 g1 consisting of all the pixels greater than t and g2 consisting of all the pixels less than or equal to t okay then we calculated mu1 which is the average of g1 and mu2 which is the average of g2 right so then we got our mu1 and mu2 values 8 and 3 okay we got here 2.83 which was rounded off to 3 and then we calculated our new threshold value which is half of 8 plus 3 right according to the formula and which is equal to 5.5 rounded it off to 5 now you can see there is no difference between the initial threshold which we had taken and the new threshold which we got. So that's why we can stop the process here. Okay. But uh, if there is some other example, this might not always be the case. Then you need to check for the difference to be minimum. Okay. So you can see in this step, the difference in T in success of iterations is smaller than a predefined parameter T0. So you need to continue the iterations until then. Okay. So these were the steps for procedure for global thresholding to obtain T. Now let's understand adaptive thresholding. See, global thresholding we mainly use for images which have two dominant modes. For example, let's look at an image here. You can see there are mainly two dominant modes here. Okay. The light region and the dark region but for images which have more than two dominant modes for example let's draw an image here and there's some sort of a figure here now this region is white okay so this white background here and then here we have dark region 
okay so this is very dark region and then here we have a little lighter region so you can see there are mainly three dominant modes here right in this sort of images we cannot use global thresholding why because global thresholding just has one threshold value and that won't be enough for this image so that's why we use adaptive thresholding okay which has more than one threshold value now how do we do uh, segmentation in this image what we'll do is that we first divide this image into blocks okay so we will divide it into blocks and then we would do adaptive sorry global thresholding on each of these blocks okay so this is known as adaptive thresholding what do we do we take the image we divide it into blocks and then we apply the same procedure as global thresholding on each of these blocks so what happens is that when we divide into blocks we can get rid of the three dominant modes okay we keep dividing until we get two dominant modes right so this is how adaptive thresholding is done now these steps for adaptive thresholding first convolve the image with a suitable statistical operator such as mean or median then subtract the original from the convolved image after that threshold the difference image with c okay so this result which we get from step 2 okay uh, we'll threshold it with c okay what is c c is a constant c is any constant value and then we invert the threshold image so these were the steps for adaptive thresholding that's it for this lecture i will see you in the next one